those last few days of summer vacation when Mallory Olszewski doesn't have to worry about sending her son Riley to school. The school is kind of a, a cesspool, if you will, um, for these eradicated diseases when children don't vaccinate. So sending him to school is very scary for us. Riley is immunocompromised and can't get certain vaccines, which makes him vulnerable to serious illness if other parents choose not to vaccinate their kids. It's everywhere. And then, you know, some moms won't vaccinate and then other moms won't vaccinate because this mom didn't. Take the MMR shot, which prevents measles, mumps and rubella. In order to prevent outbreaks, 95 percent of the population needs to get the shot. In Toronto, only 92 percent of school-aged children have been vaccinated. In Ottawa, only 94 percent of seven-year-olds have been immunized. That puts kids like Riley at risk. To get those numbers up, public health officials here are looking for guidance on how to combat medical mistrust. And the answer could come from half a world away, where Canadian researchers are helping people in Congo grapple with Ebola. There's a sense of mistrust. Right? Rumors are going around right, about that, oh, the vaccine is actually, you get injected with the virus, right? Or that it's a government conspiracy. York uh, University COVID. professor Harris Ali is part of a team taking on Ebola in Congo by enlisting people who live there. It's open to all the, the community leaders, whoever they may be. It's an approach that has had great success in the Ebola outbreak in Liberia several years ago earn the trust of the people, sometimes by addressing simple pre-existing needs in the community, like fresh water by building wells. This trust helps them draw in leaders who are already respected. Those leaders are then educated about the disease and deputized to help track it in their own community. Because oftentimes uh, there's some arrogance in the response that, OK, you know, we in the West know better. Um, you know, there's no sort of attention to the local knowledge, to the local practices. A successful response to Ebola will only occur if there's community engagement. Okay? Without that, it will be a failure. There's no question that that kind of an intervention could definitely have an impact here in Canada. Dr. Vanina Dubé says 20% of Canadian parents are on the fence about vaccinations. She thinks creating vaccination ambassadors in school and parent groups could inoculate parents against vaccination misinformation. And so we know that when these messages are spread in mom groups or at the park, that they can actually be extremely influential as well. In Ottawa, Mallory Olszewski agrees. I think a lot of the times when doctors come out and really push for things they believe in, it's admirable and it's, it's definitely something that they should do. Um, but it doesn't hold as much weight as a mom who has a little girl or a little boy who has been vaccinated. An approach she is already taking, one mom at a time. Katie Nicholson, CBC News, Toronto.